13.1 is all about probability. Is there anyone who thinks they might know what the word probability means? Katie, what do you think? The chance of how high the Okay, very good. Basically, the chance of something happening, okay? So there's a couple formulas that I want you to know. The first one is theoretical probability. This is favorable outcomes over the total number of outcomes. Does anyone think they know what that word theoretical means? It might not be wrong. Okay, so a theory, something that you might try to come up with, something could be right, something could be wrong. Anyone else have a guess of what theory or theoretical might mean? Basically, it's like something hypothetical, okay? Trying to figure out if it's right or not, okay? We don't know if it's right or not, but it's what theoretically would make the most sense. Then you can see here what says favorable outcomes. That's like if you're looking for something, okay? So the favorable outcomes is gonna be the thing that you're looking for. The total outcomes is the total number of times that it could possibly happen. Next up, experimental probability. What do you think experimental probability has to do with? Experimenting. Experimenting. So it's when you're actually trying something out. And then you would see the number of successes. That's the number. If you're looking for something, it's the number of times it actually happened. And then the number of trials is the total number of times that you tried to do something. All right. So here's a scenario that could happen. There's a bag that has a bunch of marbles in it. There are three blue marbles, four green marbles, and three red marbles. Find the probability of randomly choosing these colors. Okay, now I have a picture right here with some colors in there, but this is not the one that actually has the, um, the marbles that we're talking about, okay? So first up, find the probability, that's what this right here means, the P, of finding a blue. So if I stick my hand inside that bag, what's the probability that I will pull out a blue one? So if you look, we know we have to do favorable over total. Favorable is the thing we're looking for. So what are we looking for in problem number one? The blue, okay? How many blue are there? Three. Three. So that becomes the favorable amount, because that's what I'm looking for, over the total. How many total marbles are there? Ten. Ten. How'd you figure that out? There were three blue, four green, and three red. When you add those up, you figure out that there's ten. Can three tenths be reduced? No. No. So there is a three out of ten chance that I would pull out a blue marble. Now, this is all theoretical probability because in theory, that's what would happen. If I pull it out 10 times, three of them would probably be blue, okay? Experimental would be if I was actually doing the experiment. Let's go on to the next one, the probability of finding a red. Who wants to do this one? What do you think, Kyla? Um, there's three red marbles, and all of them add up to 10. Yeah, so you are correct. You are correct. So once again, there is a 3 out of 10 chance that I would pull out a red. Next one, Jakari, what do you think? You are correct, because remember, from now until the end of your math career, you want to always simplify or reduce everything. So yes, there's a 2 out of 5 chance that I would pull out a green marble with this bag. Does that make sense, what probability means? Okay, we're going to do a few more examples. All right, here we go. Second scenario. Each letter in Tennessee is written on a separate piece of paper, like you can see right here that I have up on the board, okay? So if I was to put all of those into a little bag, we are trying to find out the probability that we would randomly choose these different letters, okay? So find the probability of the event and write the probability as a fraction. Right now, we are doing theoretical probability because we are just kind of guessing or assuming what in theory would happen. What is the probability that I would choose an E? First off, how many E's are in Tennessee? Four. Four of them, okay? And how many total letters do I have in Tennessee? Nine. So what's the probability, guys? Four out of nine, okay? There's a four out of nine chance that I would choose an E. Next up, what is the probability that I would choose an N? Who can tell me? Who wants to do this one? Michael, help me out. All right, two out of nine chance. Because if you look there, there are two Ns and there are nine total. So you are correct. There's a two out of nine chance. Can that be simplified? Nope, so we'll leave it just like that. 
Next up, Asia. What is the probability that I would choose a T? What is it? A one out of nine chance that that would happen. So if I were to do this experiment right now, then we would turn this into an experimental probability kind of thing, all right? Which one of these letters do you think is most likely that we will choose? T. E. I mean, e. Not a T. There's only one T. An E. Why? Because, because there's four. All right. Let's go ahead and do this as an experiment. All right. So when she pulled that S out, what was the probability she would have gotten that? Two out of nine. All right. It wasn't likely. Out of nine chances, only two of them could have been that, and that's what she got. Okay. Let's do another scenario. Yes. Thank you. All right. Example number three. Roll a number cube or a dice and write the probability as a fraction, a decimal, and a percent. First up, you can see this dice that I have up here. What is the probability that there could be an even number on there? Five out of six numbers. Um, three out of three. Okay, three, three, three out of six. What are the three numbers that are even numbers? Two, two, four, two four, and six. Two, four, and six, okay? So there's three out of six chance. Can that be simplified? Yes. What is it? One half. Now, there's a one out of two chances that it will be an even number each time that I roll. Once again, this is theoretical probability because we're just kind of trying to figure out what we think might happen, but we're not experimenting yet, all right? What would that be as a decimal? 50. 50. 0. 0. 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5. And then that as a percentage is what? 50. 50. All right, so we've got a 50-50 chance. There's a 50% chance that it could be an even number. Ready? I'm going to roll it. It was a six. Did I get an even number? I did. Very good. All right, next up. Find the probability that I would roll a four. What do you think, Alex? Um, one out of six. A one out of six chance because there's only one four on here. Let's talk about one out of six. Put into your calculators if you need to. What would that be as a decimal? Okay, 0.16 repeating, which means, so think about this now. If I want that to be a percentage rounded to the nearest whole number, what would it be? I want a whole percentage, though. 17% is correct. All right, is that that big of a probability? Not really. That's a small chance. All right, so let's see. We're going to see if we roll a four this time. What'd I get? One. one. It was a one, all right? So it was a small probability that would have happened, and it didn't happen. Now we want to find the probability that the number would be less than five. How many numbers on this dice are less than five? Uh, three. Four. 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 four of them. What are they? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so four is the number that we're going to put up on top because that's my favorable outcome. I'm looking for a number less than four. Out of, what's my total outcome? Six. Can that be simplified? Yes. What is it? Two, four. No, I mean, two thirds. Two thirds. What would that be as a decimal? Uh, that would be uh, point six. Point six repeating. So if I was doing that, what would this be if I needed it as a percentage rounded to the nearest whole number? Seven. Listen, it would go over two, so you'd have 66.6 .6 rounded to the nearest whole number. And what is it? 66.7. Whole number. 67%. All right. Are the odds in our favor to get something less than five? Yes. Yes, they are. Who wants to roll it for me? Me, Alex. All right, here we go. Tell us what you got. We're looking for a number less four, three, two, or one. Six. And we got a six. No, it's the way he rolled it. He the odds were not in our favor, okay? So that's how you find the probability for that. You can write probability as a fraction or as a percentage, either one. All right, let's do another example. A cat that knows the shake command offers either of its front paws to shake. Now, do we normally see cats doing tricks? Yes. yes. No. Not yes. often. Yes. 
All right, in just a minute, I am going to show you a video of a cat doing some tricks. So listen up so that we can get through this, all right? This is an experimental probability because somebody actually did this. They found out that the cat lifted up its right paw 12 times and its left paw 38 times. Because this was an experiment that was performed, we're now doing experimental probability. So remember, this means the number of successes over the number of trials. That's how you find the probability for this. So what was the probability that he shook with his right paw? One out of two. No. What would it be? 12 over 50. How'd you get the number 50? Good job. They did 12 and 38, so you just add those up together. Can that be simplified? Yes. Yes, what would it be? 6 over 25. Okay, there's a 6 out of 25 chance that that would happen, all right, or that it did happen. What percentage is that? Um, 24%. 24%, okay. So 24% of the time, this cat shook with its right paw. Left paw, what do you think? 38 over 50. Can that be simplified? Yes. yes. What would it be? 19 over 25. 19 over 25. Go ahead and tell me, what would the percentage be 19 out of 25 times? 76. Not a decimal, but a percentage. 76%. 76%. Now, I want you to add these two percentages together right there. All right. It makes sense because you did it 100% of the time. Okay? I have a scenario here of a cat that actually... Knows how to high five. He can also fist bump. All right, so this is an experimental probability, okay? What happened was of the 20 voters polled after an election for class president, 14 of those voters voted for Zach. So basically, a teacher went into a room, there were 20 students there, and said, hey guys, I want to know who voted for Zach. 14 people there raised their hand. What was the probability that a randomly chosen voter, if I just pulled one, would have voted for Zach? I want you to try to do it on your own. All right, so remember, we are trying to find the number of successes over the number of trials. Don't let that kind of wording mess you up. Basically, what we're looking for, okay? So we can see here that there were 14 voters that did vote for Zach out of 20. So what is that as a fraction? 14 over 20. 14 over 20. Can it be simplified? Yes. 7 over 10. 7 over 10. What would that be as a percentage? 70%. 70 percent of the people voted for Zach out of that room, okay? So the probability of that happening, 70%. All right? Does that make sense what probability is? Yes. yes. Fantastic. Good job listening today.